So in this video, we're going to talk about segmentation by visitor activity. So what does that mean? Basically, uh, we're going to talk about retargeting and speaking to people based off of what content they visit on your website. So even if you don't have a website, don't worry, don't run away yet. I still um, want you to learn this system. Uh, but first, I want to talk a little bit about retargeting in general. Um, so retargeting, also known as remarketing, is a form of online advertising that can help you keep your brand in front of a bounced, in front of bounced traffic after they leave your website. So we're following up with people after they leave the website or the web page. For most websites, only 2% of web traffic converts on the first visit. Retargeting is a tool designed to help companies reach the 98% of users who don't convert right away. And that's from retargeter.com. Um, it's really important. This shows the significance of retargeting. A lot of people leave off retargeting because they don't think it's important and they've already set up ad campaigns. Um, and it's just really the last step that they don't want to take. But look at all of the traffic that you're leaving on the table and all the opportunity you're leaving on the table um, if you don't implement retargeting. So retargeting is a cookie-based technology that uses simple, uh, uses simple JavaScript code to anonymously follow your audience all over the web. Uh, but it doesn't have to be annoying, right? Um, the great thing about retargeting and, and how we look at retargeting at Digital Marketer it doesn't have to be annoying, right? And you're assuming that they didn't say no. So you're using retargeting as a follow-up, not a way to try to change their mind. Um, so we're assuming that they didn't say no. We're um, assuming that they just didn't have time to take the action, right? Something happened. Um, you know, they're, they got distracted or they were in the car or, you know, they got a phone call and they w weren't able to take um, the action on the page. So we're following up with them and we're reminding them to take that specific action. So retargeting is really the easiest aspect of running paid traffic. It's also cheap. Um, it's mostly dynamic. Um, and it allows you to make specific offers to specific audiences. Um, and obviously, the more specific offer you can make, the more catered it is um, to the person you're talking to, the better it's going to convert. Retargeting is also, um, you know, runs on autopilot. So we'll be able to set up these campaigns um, and, you know, watch them and check in on them. Um, but essentially, these campaigns are running on autopilot, which is awesome um, for media buyers and, and will save you time. Retargeting is also not platform specific. Like I talked about earlier, um, these principles can really be applied on any platform. Um, you could use a third party tool for all of your retargeting, like Perfect Audience or Retargeter. So really what's important here is the concept. So, so we're going to talk about retargeting content visitors, and then we're going to talk about retargeting your offers. So this is all about retargeting from your content, right? So pop quiz, which ad would get more clicks from a vegan? So the ad on the left that says get hundreds of vegetarian recipes you can prepare in less than 20 minutes or get hundreds of vegan recipes you can prepare in less than 20 minutes. Which ad would get more clicks from a vegan? obviously the vegan ad because it's more specific. And why? Why? Because we made the right offer to the right audience. It's more specific. So if you have one piece of content for your cold traffic offer, that's totally okay. You can still implement this system. You're still learning that they're interested um, in that whatever you're talking about in that particular piece of content. It's still viable. Um, and we'll use Facebook website custom audiences as the example to show you how to retarget people that visit your content. So here's how to create an audience and retarget just one web page. So if we hop over here, 
We're going to go to audiences. And we want to ret- retarget someone who hits a specific blog post. So say we want to retarget people who hit this specific blog post. We already have the website custom audience pixel installed on the website. So we're going to go to create audience, custom audience, website traffic, anyone who visits a specific web page, URL equals, and then we're actually just going to take this part of the URL past the root domain. So forward slash troubleshooting dash traffic dash campaigns. So we can increase this up to 180 days. If you're getting a significant amount of traffic and just want to retarget people, um, you know, in the past week or the past 30 days, that's totally up to you. Traffic. So we're going to name this troubleshooting traffic blog post and we're going to create the audience. So it's going to appear as audience is too small. Um, It'll take a few hours and it really depends on how much traffic is actually going to that web page. But once they're able to pixel more than 20 people, you'll start to see this audience populate. So that's how you create a retargeting audience uh, for a specific piece of content. Um, It's very similar on Google and other traffic platforms. I just want to make sure that even if you only have, you know, one piece of content that you're running to cold traffic, um, that you still understand how to set up that audience and and really why it's important. But what I really want to talk about is, um, you know, what if you have multiple pieces of content on your website? Or what if you plan to have multiple pieces of content on your website? And I want to explain a system that you can set up so that you can make sure you're creating um, these retargeting audiences based off of specific topics, right? Um, We really want audiences of people based off of their specific interests. So if you look at um, if you look at this diagram, and you think about um, you know the the way a blog could work, right? So back to this idea of the recipes website. Maybe you sort of have three categories on this site. You have vegetarians, gluten free, and vegans, and you have you know all of this traffic coming to your website, whether it's from email, SEO, paid traffic, social media, it doesn't just have to be from whatever traffic source you're retargeting. So if you're able to split this content into you know three different categories, um, and you're able to figure out which pieces of content that you have in these different categories, then we can create audiences, not only of people that just hit your website in general, but also of people who are interested in these specific topics. So imagine how powerful this is, guys, because it's we can retarget with not just offers about recipes, but we can retarget with offers about their specific interest. So for example, vegetarians, we could talk to them about a vegetarian cookbook. For gluten-free, we could talk to them about a gluten-free cookbook. For vegan, we can talk to them about a vegan cookbook. So the best way to get this set up you is either to take the blog content that you have and separate it like we did um, here in this image, or go ahead and plan what are some different segments or different categories, um, maybe th- just three, um, that I could create specific pieces of content around and therefore uh, make really specific lead magnet offers too. And the way to do this is to either take old content like we did here. These were our top um, visited blog posts on Digital Marketer when we first set up this system. And we split them into the categories of blogging, funnel, social media, email, conversion, e-commerce, AdWords. And we've since then added Facebook traffic. But you'll notice that we split all of the posts into these different categories, and we also assigned a keyword for each category. 
And we know that if we put that keyword in every relative, you know, every blog post that's applicable moving forward, um, we will keep these audience, we'll make sure that these audiences are growing and we'll keep everything segmented so that we know not just that someone visited digitalmarketer.com, but we'll know that they're specifically interested in blogging or specifically interested in funnels. So again, if you already have content, go ahead and segment it out into a few different categories and also make sure you establish a naming convention uh, moving forward with these keywords um, and make sure they're in the URL um, you know, of every blog post that's applicable moving forward. So if you, once you do go back and, you know, go through your blog content um, and you'll create a sheet just like this, we can go in to um, the audience, the audiences tab and create website custom audiences based off of old content and including keywords moving forward. So for example, you would go in and uh, let's look at this blogging audience, right? So we'll go in, we'll create um, an audience of blogging and we'll do people who visit specific web pages and we're gonna put the end parts of those URLs past the root domain from every old piece of content that has to do with blogging. We'll also include the word blogging, we'll include that keyword so that moving forward, as long as we put blogging in the URL of every future blog post that's going to talk about blogging, it will continue to populate this audience. So if you go back and you create these audiences for each of the the segments, and um, you also include this keyword moving forward, you'll essentially never have to go back and and touch these audiences again. So I know this might be a little bit confusing, but I want to make sure that that we're really catering to people that already have content, and you can go back and sort the content um, this way and set up your website custom audiences. But also, if you don't have content, um, I really want you to be thinking about different segments where you could create three to four pieces of, of content um, about different, you know, smaller topics in your market to run to cold traffic moving forward. But that you can also, you know, really go ahead and establish um, this method and, and establish um, these keywords um, so that your audiences can begin to populate. You don't have to go back later and try to figure out um, your custom audiences. So if you have a blog, go ahead and segment them and create website custom audiences for each. If you don't, start thinking about segments moving forward and keywords and pieces of content that you can create so that you can build these specific custom audiences in order to retarget uh, from your content. So, you know, what is the purpose of this, Molly, right? Why am I doing this? And like I said, uh, we're doing this so that we can build audiences um, based off of, you know, specific um, segments. So blogging, for example, everyone who visits content on our site about blogging is going to be retargeted with a specific lead magnet, right? So they were, you know, they visited our website, Uh, from cold traffic, they read something on our blog about blogging, and then we're going to retarget them with an offer about blogging, right? So this is just, you know, uh, um, you know, an ad to warm traffic about blogging. We're retargeting everyone on our site and our blogging custom audience. Um, You know, everyone who hits um, a, a post about Facebook we'll see an ad um, about our Facebook ad template library. So keep in mind that as you do build these audiences, guys, the sizes will vary based off of uh, the amount of traffic to your site. So when you do set up ads and, and you should have campaigns for each of your, you know, each of your different segments. So here is my blogging campaign 
uh, for people who have visited um, our blogging website custom audience on Facebook, for example. Um, And the size will vary based off of traffic. Um, make sure you're keeping the budget low and the frequency low because these are way smaller audiences um, than, you know, if we're running to to cold traffic, right? With cold traffic, we're trying to hit half a million to a million people. Um, With these retargeting ads, um, you know, it's all based off of people who have visited your site. So the audience size might be a lot smaller. So we want to make sure we keep the budget low. Even $5, you know, uh, will do the trick uh, with a lot of our retargeting campaigns. So make sure the budget is low and therefore, you know, the frequency is low. You don't want these people to visit your site and then see your ad, you know, more than than 10 times. Uh, That's much greater than the effective frequency that we talked about. If you're using Facebook website custom audiences to run these retargeting ads based off of content, um, make sure that that you optimize and bid for clicks on these ads, unless your audience size is over 100,000, and then you really can maintain um, the standards that we talked about in the Facebook lesson, um, you know, optimizing for conversions or, you know, optimizing for website clicks based off of really what your goal is. Uh, if, but here, if your audience size is below 100,000 for these retargeting ads to your content, go ahead and always optimize and bid for clicks because your audience size is going to be so small Um, that you can't really optimize for conversions because the action is not going to happen frequently enough.